Greetings, my friends. It is seven months and two weeks post-op. If you are new to my channel, I very much appreciate you tuning in. Um, I underwent a rare and controversial surgery in March of 2020, right before the pandemic lockdowns began in Phoenix, Arizona, called pudendal nerve decompression surgery. This is a surgery that involves re removing slash clearing away scar tissue around the pudendal nerve, which is the main nerve in the pelvis um, that innervates um, both autonomic and sympathetic fibers, which means that it controls um, both conscious and unconscious control and causes very three-dimensional pain issues for me. Um, I was going on seven years of left-sided nerve pain that progressively got worse and worse over time. Um, and I decided to make the leap and make, and have the surgery with Dr. Hibner, who is one of the top surgeons in the U.S. for this particular issue. Um, he has relocated to Scottsdale, Arizona and opened his own practice. Um, I did hear from him again via email, but unfortunately, um, it's still looking like he is not um, accepting insurance to um, do a virtual visit at this time, which is very unfortunate. However, I think at this point in time, I the only thing that I can do really is wait, wait it out um, till at least March of 2021, if not longer than that. Um, for this type of nerve surgery, um, it's uh, very poor results overall. Um, it was just a gamble that I took to maybe see if it would have an effect on this nerve pain. Um, I do have, um, sometimes I have relief in the morning um, for a few hours. Between certain hours, it seems like uh, earlier in the day, it's a greater likelihood that I will have relief. I am in pretty much 24-7 discomfort, whether or not it is um, the pudendal nerve pain, which is on the entire left side of my pelvis, um, from my tailbone extending to the deep gluteal area, rectal, uh, vulvar area, inner leg, inner thigh, uh, back of the leg, etc. Um, I... Um, also have a uh, very specific uh, left-sided lower abdominal pain, which I have been working in physical therapy with Brandy Kirk, who is the owner of Kirk Center for Healthy Living. It is a pelvic-specific physical therapy place in the South Chicago suburbs, in which I have had amazing help from many different pelvic floor physical therapists who place an emphasis on um, external visceral work, which is more about feeling where the tension in your body is at the given moment and where it's basically pulling on either organs, connective tissue, vessels, nerves, uh, what have you. Um, I've had a couple internal assessments since June, and the overall consensus is that my entire pelvic floor is tight, but they do not believe that that is the source of the pain issue. It is a secondary effect of that nerve um, misfiring and the pain that I've been experiencing in the abdominal area. Um, I've been doing lots of research um, in the last few months and I discovered um, the possibility of vascular compression syndromes as contributing to a lot of this pain that I've been having. Um, more specifically, I visited an interventional radiologist and a vascular surgeon who believe that I have May Turner syndrome, which is the compression of the iliac vein by the right iliac artery on the left side. Um, a lot of these people present with leg swelling and blood clotting in the left leg. However, I have an atypical presentation, which I have round ligament of the uterus pain, which is right where that iliac vein kind of is, which can um, set off a bunch of different nerve issues in the pelvis. And it can also cause uh, inappropriate blood pooling in the pelvis, um, inappropriate blood rerouting to the pelvis, um, as well as lack thereof blood flow to certain areas. Um, there is no way to really 100% know that this is the issue until you have a venogram with intravascular ultrasound in which I am going to be undergoing on Friday 
Tomorrow I have to do a COVID test in order to be admitted from the to the hospital. Um, and then I they will go in and see exactly where the compressions are. There's another couple, there's several different syndromes um, that could possibly that I could possibly have in addition to May Turner's, but my doctor is pretty sure with the way I'm presenting that I have May Turner syndrome. I've been doing a lot of thinking about my past um, doctor's experiences and disabdominal pain, which is getting progressively worse as time goes on. Um, it usually starts up hurting between 3 and 4 p.m., and then it just gets significantly worse up until the evening. Um, I've gathered as much that any time that there's any type of volume in my intestinal area, whether that be liquid or solid, um, it puts pressure on that um, iliac area, and I believe I have a large abdominal varicose that has been making eating a nightmare for me. Um, I've intentionally lost some weight, which I'm not proud of. Um, I am very hungry. I, it's not an appetite issue. Um, I would love to be able to eat like a normal human being. However, I just have to, I, I've been more hyper aware of what I've been eating. I've been trying to eat every four hours, small meals, not huge meals at a time. However, there just doesn't seem to be a way to avoid the impending abdominal pain that comes later in the day. I also have very much issues with standing up and fatigue, and I can only be on my feet for about 15 minutes at a time before the symptoms continue to progress. Um, lately, the dizzy spells and kind of fainting sort of issues have like returned a little bit. Um, usually later at night, it's worse. Um, basically, um, the other thing I'm trying to do is work with my physical therapist who saw me prior to surgery and um, asking them like which areas of my body were they getting pulled to prior to surgery because I'm pretty sure one of them had mentioned vascular issues back then and I had assumed that just because I had a pelvic MRI with contrast that it would immediately be able to show something that was compressed or whatever but um, unless you have a vascular doctor looking at these issues they get missed so um it just goes to show you that uh, pedental decompression surgery should be your absolute last resort. Um, you should rule out anything possible that is contributing to the pudendal pain. Whether or not you think it's directly a pudendal issue, it could be referred pain from somewhere else, such as like a back issue, an SI joint issue, a digestive issue, a vessel issue, a hernia issue, a uterine issue. It could be all those things or none of those things, but it's important to have those ruled out prior to surgery. Um, so the other good thing is I finally got my bed. It's a king size bed. It's nice and big. Um, it's, uh, I need a mattress pad, but I appreciate any and all ex, um, uh, recommendations that people have given me on Facebook for a um, new mattress pad. So I'm super happy. Um, I was sleeping on a futon and a cheap Ikea bed up in the other room when I was up there. Um, I am currently living with my parents and probably will be indefinitely until I um, get approved for disability. My application got holed up because they can um, get a hold of Dr. Hibner. So um and some in my records, so I may have to do some phone calls to um, make sure that they can get my records over that I had this surgery, because people usually get denied at least once or twice before they can get disability, because nobody knows what pudendal nerve decompression is, or the pudendal nerve whatsoever. So my goal with this blog is to simply reach out to folks who've had complex pelvic pain, um, pudendal neuralgia, nerve pain in general, and that have invisible illness. Um, I greatly appreciate any and all comments that you guys have left me. I've gotten a lot of positive feedback on Facebook. I've gotten a lot of positive messages from people, and I'm starting to video chat with some folks that have pudendal neuralgia. Um, I have never in person met somebody else that has pudendal neuralgia. I've only been talking to people online. I talked to a couple of women that have non-classical May Turner's presentation and they have had positive results with the stent. However, I am still on the fence 
over having the stents placed because overall right now I do not really trust doctors. They do what they can do and then they leave you to just cope with the rest on your own. And I really just don't feel like I've had a doctor who has seen it through with me. Um, they, you know, do what they know and you basically just use them as a vehicle to get blood work done and testing, but you have to do all the research on your own and ask them to rule out specific disorders. And unless you do that, there's no point in going to a doctor if you have a rare syndrome. If you have something common, that's different. Um, something that has treat treatments that have been studied, treatments that have been um, recommended to them, that they've been educated on, all fine and dandy. They are superior um, help with the, those kinds of things, but unless they know exactly what's happening to you and they have proof of what's happening to you, they will most likely just blame your issue on something that it is not. So it is up to you to keep freaking going. Um, keep getting things ruled out. Eventually something will turn up unexpectedly that you will then understand. Um, the other thing I was thinking of doing is some genetic testing for connective tissue disorders that I may I may have um, in addition to this because a lot of people with pain issues may have stuff like that. So um, Phanogram is this Thursday. I have one more meeting with Brandy um, prior to the procedure. I probably won't even decide until the day of if I'm going to get this stent placed. It's a permanent thing. Um, it hasn't been studied beyond 20 years. People really don't know the long-term results of having a stent internally. So it's a tough decision, but I'm going to keep going. And um, I, will pr I will maybe consider posting one more video prior to the procedure. And I will obviously update you guys post-procedure. Thank you for watching. Um, if anybody you know has chronic pelvic pain, um, a Turner syndrome, a vascular compression syndrome, I would be most in, um, enthused to talk to such people. Reach out to me on Facebook, um, Instagram. Embrace the world in gray is my username. All underscores. I am on Tumblr. I am on Instagram. I am on YouTube. Um, and that's it. I will talk to you guys later. Thanks for listening and adios.